Welcome to Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off, flash fiction stories written by Josh Bush and narrated by Glenda Villamar. Enjoy! You have 1,440 minutes in a day. Use five of those minutes and visit freerice.com to play trivia games and help end world hunger. Freerice.com If you would like to donate to help support the podcast, you can donate at coffee.com. That's ko-fi.com. And you can also buy our ebook anthology, compiling the stories from our first 10 episodes. You can find our book on lulu.com. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Zeb examined her from across the table, and he just knew this L was wealthy by the designer clothes she was wearing. So why L was here having an interview with him to get a job in his hotel didn't make a lick of sense to Zeb. He was about to ask her a question when a guest appeared and asked for a cup of coffee. Zeb shot up and asked, How do you take it? The guest, a short woman in business attire, answered, Just like I like my men, full of piss and vinegar. Zeb, without missing a beat, said, I can help you with the first part, but we don't have any vinegar, I'm afraid. Two sugars, please, not the fake stuff, and two fingers of half and half. Zeb gave the guest her coffee and returned to Elle at the table. Sorry, but that's life at a hotel. Always on some errand while you're in the middle of doing something else. Now, what makes you want to work in a hotel? Zeb thought Elle looked like she was trying to think of something clever to say gave up kind of quick and said, I don't really know. I'm bored, to be honest. I need some human contact. Zeb thought, well, that wasn't the best answer in the world. What experience do you have in customer service? Your resume here is basically blank. It says you have a degree in art history and that you've never had a job before, but you look like you're in your mid-thirties. Surely you've worked somewhere since you graduated. Nonplussed, L shrugged. Never had a job before. I only went to college because that was the only way my dad would give me my trust fund. So I don't need to work, because I have money. I want a job, so I can be around people. So I don't have experience with customer service, unless you count me talking with people, providing me with customer service as customer service. Zeb raised an eyebrow and said, To be honest, as long as you're nice to people, I don't care if you have experience or not. Let's show you around the hotel. L got up and pointed, You've been admiring the fireplace. Is it real? Does it burn wood? Zeb affirmed, Yes, it's real. In the winter, we burn wood in it. They walked over. L bent down, looked up the fireplace, and shrieked as something fell on her curious face. To get out of the way of whatever it was, L fell backwards, landing on her butt. Zeb lamented, Not again! As he saw a diminutive green goblin wearing a bonnet, and a loincloth jump from the fireplace and start to skulk around under one of the tables. Elle stammered, What's going on? What is that? Zeb grabbed something from behind the front desk and said, It's just a goblin. They come in every now and then looking for items that guests have left, like loose change, buttons, keys, wallets, and cell phones. So keep an eye on your cell phone. And he blasted the goblin with a water gun he'd gotten from behind the front desk. You've got to aim for the face for the best effect. The goblin howled and ran back up the chimney. Elle stood up, brushed herself off, and asked, What kind of place is this? Goblins? Weird stuff happens here. It's because I'm a wizard. Here, let's have you see one of the rooms. Elle trailed behind Zeb, and she questioned, If you're a wizard, then why do you need to run a hotel? Zeb unlocked the door and explained, It's because being a wizard doesn't really pay the bills. I guess it could if I knew how to market myself, but I don't know how to. So, I chopped up my manor here and turned it into a hotel. And to be honest, I'm not doing that well at making money with the hotel. Again, I don't know how to market, and I can't afford advertising. Elle gasped. This room is beautiful! It's stunning! Look at these drapes! And Elle fell back away from the window, to get away from the vampire who had just come in. The vampire leapt on top of Elle, and he was about to take a bite from her neck. Zeb thrust a crucifix at the vampire and commanded, 
Christ compels you to leave the woman alone and to depart. Leave now. Go. The vampire got off of L and sounding really sore about it said, Okay, fine, I'm going. Can't blame a guy for trying. And he turned into a bat and flew out the window. Zeb helped L up and apologized. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting to shut the windows. Which reminds me, we've got to make sure that every room is equipped with a crucifix for just such an occasion. L touched the bed. It's so soft. The sheets. Oh my, I didn't know sheets could get this soft. Zeb wondered, So I haven't scared you off? You're still interested in working here? Elle shook her head. I don't scare easy. If anything, these weird things make me more interested in the hotel. And then they heard a loud wailing that went on and on. Elle said, It's so sad. It's more melancholy than any song I've ever heard. I think I'm going to cry. What is it? Zeb went out into the hall and screamed, Okay, Della, that's good. Thank you. And the wailing stopped. Zeb motioned for Elle to come out into the hall. She went after him and Zeb explained, It's checkout time. I hired Della, a banshee, to moan every day at noon to let the guests know it's checkout time. But no one's checking out today. I forgot to tell Della this morning. Zeb was amazed at how happy Elle looked. She seemed excited. She really wasn't put off at all. He asked her, Would you stay here? Elle smiled, Yes. Would you tell your friends and family to stay here? Elle confirmed, Yes. Well, I would just love if you stayed here and told people about my hotel. Elle giggled. This is the strangest interview I've ever been on. Zeb said, Let's go back up front. How would you know if this is a strange interview? You've never even had a job before. Have you been on an interview before today? Elle smiled. I've been on loads and loads of interviews. I go on interviews to have conversations with people. It's the best way I know to get human contact. Just spending time with another human. The conversations can be really moving sometimes. Deep, even. I go on interviews, and I don't even want the job, because, like I said, I have money, and I don't need to work. To be honest, I don't really want to work here. Zeb responded with, To tell you the truth, I don't have any job openings. I only interview people as a way to advertise the hotel. Elle lightly punched Zeb on the shoulder and said, Well, it worked, because I want to stay here. The end. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We look forward to bringing you the next episode in Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off.